okay if that was for me, but if, if anybody glad that Jesus was here this morning, and Jesus said that he was here for you, Sunday school lesson and a uh, unbelieving atheist person came in to buy some coffee yeah. Yeah. he glanced over and he saw that lady sitting there studying her lesson identified her as a Christian he came up to her and he said to her he said hey listen uh, I got something for you I got a question for you she said yes sir he, he said y'all Christians call it Good Friday the Friday before you uh, Easter. He said, yes, sir. Yes, sir. She said, yes, sir. We, we call it Good Friday. He said, well, what's good about somebody's hands and feet being nailed to a wooden cross? He said, what's good about a thorn, uh, a crown of thorns being crushed into somebody's skull? What's good about somebody bleeding to death and being pierced in the side? What's good about somebody's hanging there for hours to they die? So I got something on you Christians. Y'all y'all, y'all got y'all theology wrong. She, she kindly smiled at him and leaned over and said, sir, you got your theology wrong. The reason why we call it Good Friday from a humanistic standpoint how dying on a cross can be horrible the agony your homeboy is leaving you, you they denied you three times the folk that yelled Hosanna, Hosanna just a few days ago are now yelling crucify him, crucify him I understand from a humanistic standpoint how that can be bad but let me tell you why we call it Good Friday we, we call it Good Friday because he was wounded for my treasure. He was bruised for my iniquity. The chastisement of our peace was upon him. By his stripes, we are healed. That, sir, is what we call it Good Friday. So welcome, ma'ams, and welcome, sir. It's Good Friday. We come to celebrate. way our program is going to proceed is printed. My name is Philip Higgins. I guess I can say this now, the proud pastor of Unity of Faith Visionary Amen. 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 But we get ready to have a good time. I have some, some, some homiletical heroes that are sitting behind me. And I get the pleasure of being off on tonight. Amen. This is all I'm going to do right here. But we're going to let them come and we're going to let them give God what has what he has given them. First, we'll have the proud pastor of this church, Pastor Mike Smack. We bless God for my older dark-skinned brother. Amen. That was Harris. Then we have Pastor J. Edwards. Amen. We'll have Pastor K. Dalton. Yeah. Then we'll have the heavy hitter of Houston, Pastor Robert Bailey Jr. Yeah. And then we will have a song, and I'll be right back to introduce our uh, next guest. Y'all ready for the word? Y'all yeah. go ahead and stick your hands to all the preachers up here and say, I need a word today. Preach. Amen. 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 Amen.
Amen. Amen. Amen. Amen. Amen. Amen. Amen. Amen. Amen. Amen. Amen. Amen. Amen. Amen. Amen. Amen. Amen. Amen. Amen. Amen. Amen. Amen. Amen. Amen. Amen. Amen. Amen. I'm going to come out of Luke, the 23rd chapter, Luke 23, Luke 23, Luke chapter 23 and third verse 34. Get that? Everyone has it. Luke chapter 23, verses 34. The word says, then said Jesus, Father, forgive them. Yes. For they know not what they do. I'm going to read that once more again. The scripture says, then said Jesus, Father, forgive them. For they know not. Yeah. What they do. Talk, yeah. sir. Amen. Sir. If you will, for, for, for 15 minutes, I'm going to try a little bit earlier to that. Amen. For, for, for 12 minutes, I'm going to yeah. preach off the topic entitled, This is Hard for Me to Do. Look at somebody oh, Lord. and say, Neighbor, this is hard. This is hard for me to do. Let me say, the brothers of God, this, this, is, this is a challenging text um, for some because this passage breathes about a very difficult dilemma. For many, because while professing to be Christians, we say, that we strive to be Christ-like. Yeah. And while some are striving to be Christ-like and live for Christ, there are going to be some disappointments. There are going to be some broken hearts from others. There are yeah. going to be some families walking away. There are some friends are going to be few. Marriages are going to be broken. Kids are going to do the opposite of what you have taught them. And even after all that that goes on, you still must strive to be Christ-like. Yeah. It is challenging to some because how does Jesus, while on the cross and have just heard the crowd say, crucify him, still ask his father for forgiveness. Yeah. Yeah. What, what is curious is Jesus prays on the cross Father, forgive them. Yeah. Yeah. He, he does not say, can I help you? What's curious is, Jesus does not say, I forgive you. Yeah. Can, can I suggest to some of y'all that it's not always easy to forgive others when the offense is fresh. Yeah. It's, it's not always easy to forgive others when the offense is fresh. Sometimes it takes a while. Yeah. Sometimes it ends all of those who tell you, um, child, you need to forgive, child, you need to let it go. The truth of the matter is, you don't know what I had to go through. And if you didn't take my tears and you can't tell me to forgive something if you didn't walk in my shoes. And this is, somebody say, this is something hard for me to do. This, this is something hard for me to do. He said, Father, forgive them. Because the only way forgiveness is given to someone is I got to have the help of my father. Yeah. And can I tell you, you won't, you won't forgive trying to do it yourself. Right. You need the father's help. Yeah. Uh, forgiveness in the Greek means aphesis, which means dismissal, which means release, which means pardon. Uh, there's a song that says, I was sinking so deep in sin, far from the peaceful shore, very deeply stained within, sinking to rise no more. But the master of the sea heard my despairing cry, and the waters looked at me. Now sing on my after song said, love lifted me when nothing else could help. It was love that lifted me. First John 1 and 9 tells us if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us. He faithful and just to forgive us of our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. He says, Father, forgive them. The question I have to ask is, who is them? These are Judas. This is Judas has just betrayed him for 30 pieces of silver. Peter has denied him three times. Soldiers, pilots, chief priests, and scribes, Pharisees, and Sadducees. And the truth of the matter is that them is you and I. Watch this. Witnesses watch Jesus heal the sick. Witnesses, witnesses watch him raise people from the dead. Open blinded eyes. So yet they said, crucify him. And my question is, can I talk to tell somebody if they did it? Jesus, they're going to do it to you. You want to get your name back and say, hey, listen, uh, amen. some folks going to talk about you, some folks going to lie on you, and then some people going to scandalize your name if they did it to Jesus. So they, they showed up. They, they showed up going to do to you. So, so who, is, who is them? And them is those that watch Jesus walk through the town and heal the sick and raise the dead. But yet they say, crucify him. Jesus is on the cross. Shows a moment of compassion. Shows a, a moment of love because he looks at the people and he says, Father, forgive me. Yeah. Oh, y'all, y'all know I'm a police officer, so I can imagine that there's a heavenly court. I can imagine that God is the judge. I can imagine the devil is the prosecutor. I can imagine 
that Jesus is a different royal. And Jesus says, Father, forgive them. Watch this. So they know not what they do. Watch this. So they got devil to prosecute. You got Jesus, the defensive lawyer. And the devil presents his case. And he proves that you did every last thing that the devil said. Listen, you was caught with red handed. And you got caught on candy camera. Everybody knew what you did. Watch this. And the devil presents his case to the devil. And then you get up on the stand. And God looks at you as the judge and says, Listen, while you understand what he says is, open your mouth and tell me what you got to say. You open your mouth and look at God and you say, God, I did not know. Come on. Watch this. Jesus looks back at God and says, God, Father, please forgive them. Yeah. Now watch this. Some of y'all being too deep because some folk are like they've been saved all of their life. They've been speaking in tongues all of their life. They got the Holy Ghost running over all their life. But for some of us, we did some stuff that should have had us in jail, that should have had us in hell. But every time we did wrong, your father looked at you and said, Father, forgive them. You ought to thank God that even though you was guilty, your father still said, forgive me. I'm watching I'm done in my text, but he says, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. And I help somebody, and I'm done. The problem is, uh, and I've got to say, Pastor Stewart, the problem is, can I tell somebody, lean in real close, can I tell you why the devil can't stand you? Can I tell you why the enemy, the devil can't stand you when you wake up in the morning? Can I tell you why the devil don't like when you wake up and pray the name of the Lord? And the reason why the devil don't like you is uh, because the devil is mad uh, because he messed up one time. Uh, and when he messed up one time, uh, he got kicked out of heaven. <laughs> but you messed up over and over and over again. Uh, and every time God looks at you, uh, he says, Father, please forgive me. Uh, and you ought to tell somebody to lie. Uh, I thank God for forgiving me. Uh, I should have been dead. Uh, a long time ago, but uh, uh, my father forgave me. Uh, the word says, uh, we can pray uh, and go for a night. Uh, but God uh, has to come in the morning. Uh, and you ought to look at your people uh, and say, my father forgave me. Uh, I know what I used to be, uh, but my father forgave me. Uh, I know what I used to do, uh, but my father, you forgave me. Uh, I know where I come from, uh, but my father forgave me. Uh,